is that we do we facilitate the ability of, for people to inv- raise money from the investing public. And when I say the investing public, I mean from literally anybody. Right. Right. We don't take any stake in the deal. We don't own the deals. We're not general partners in the deals. All we do is facilitate the ability for a sponsor who has real estate deal and wants to raise money to raise money from anybody. Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big. Levy Brackman is the CEO and founder of Invone, a startup in the real estate financing and investment space. He's an experienced professional, founder of several organizations. He's an internationally best-selling author and completed his PhD in psychology. Levy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Really, really grateful to be here. Absolutely. The pleasure is mine. There are three questions I ask every guest who comes on the show in 90 seconds or less. Can you tell me, where did you start? Where are you now? And how did you get there? Well, I I started when I was born in 1978. <laughs> no, I started my, my my actual the company I'm, I'm, I'm running now, which is Invone. I started it in, in 2019, actually, and really incorporated in 2020, early 2020, right before COVID, February 2020. Um, I was trying to solve a problem, which was how to I how to how can I help homeowners? And this is a problem I had myself. Kind of cash out on their equity in a way in which would be uh, inexpensive, or not as expensive as other people who were trying to do it there. Fast forward, I started Invone, and I tried to kind of solve that for homeowners, and I realized that was really really hard because we were having. I built a, a kind of a platform which had homeowners on the one side and retail investors on the other side, both protected classes in the U.S very difficult to create a, you know, a, a, that kind of platform. I haven't given up on that dream, but what's evolved to today is a peer-to-peer um, investing platform where sponsors or people who own real estate can raise money from the investing public on our platform. And that's where we are today. We've launched, we've got some deals up and we're up and running. Got it. So you, you have launched a crowdfunding platform, I guess, in layman's yeah. terms. What, yeah. what are you doing differently? than maybe some of the other crowdfunding platforms that are out what problem on that front are you solving so it's it's really a a practical and a legal answer to that the Mm -hmm. practical answer is that we do we facilitate the ability for people to raise money from the investing public when i say the investing public i mean from literally anybody Right. right we don't take any stake in the deal we don't own the deals we're not general partners in the deal. All we do is facilitate the ability for a sponsor who has real estate deal and wants to raise money to raise money from anybody. So that's number one. Number two, it is from anybody. So a lot of the other platforms, they have their credit investor um, kind of deals. And then they have their um, non-accredited investor deals, which are not really a deals. They're really funds, which they're raising money for. Right? And those funds, then they go and invest in other deals or in their own deals, which they own. Right, but the idea for a peer-to-peer, literally anyone who owns real estate, uh, investment properties, or commercial real estate, can then raise money from anyone in the public, and we facilitate that, including all the legal documentation that are needed. You know, all the you know, we, we'll help you file your LL, for your LLCs. We'll 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 help you get all the way through to actually you know marketing it. Although we have marketing partners, we can market it ourselves. The whole you know beginning to end that kind of platform, which enables you to raise money from anybody. That's what we do. And no one else is really doing it the way we're doing it. Right. Now tell me, tell me about the different, you know, I'm I'm familiar with reg, you know, 506B for non-accredited yeah. investors, for C for accredited yeah. investors. We've done a combination of both or, or of both of those. Under what regulation are you raising on a crowdfunding platform? And is that different? Do you couple that with some other form? I mean, how does the legal side of that work? So really, like the reason why a lot of real estate sponsors don't know about this and a lot of investors don't know about this is because their lawyers don't know about it. Lawyers know what they know and they haven't gotten up to speed about like how some of the changes in the law. So basically in 2016, you had this thing called Red CF. So you had, you know, the Jobs Act of 2012, which basically said that, you know, um, you can start, they changed the securities laws, right? Which made it easier for companies to raise money from other people without having to um, actually register as you know, securities of the SEC. So they created some additional except- exceptions and codified some uh, existing exceptions in a way which makes it kind of easier to use. Those were the 506Bs and 506Cs, right? Basically one says, hey, you can raise from 
unlimited amount of accredited investors uh, and 35 non-accredited investors, but you can't advertise anywhere, right? That's a 506B. 506C says you can raise unlimited amount of money from non-accredited investors and you can add from accredited investors, sorry, only, not from non-accredited investors, and you can advertise it, right? There's only 13 million accredited investors in the United States. You know, each one of them are being hit up a million times to invest in this, that, and the other. It's really hard to get them, right? So, but you can advertise them. Really expensive population to advertise to, but you can. So, what a lot of people did was they said, okay, you want to raise money for real estate, do a five or six B, right? You And go to your friends and other people and uh, people who you know and go and raise money from them. Or if you want to advertise, only go to credit investors. And that's basically what the lawyers are telling you can do. What happened in 2016 was you had the Reg CF, which came into effect, which which said you can raise up to $1 million from non-accredited investors. Mostly that was used by startups because $1 million is not a lot of money for real estate. Didn't really make a dent. But that changed in 2021, where it became $5 million, right? Now, $5 million is that's five times the size. It will go up, my prediction is, to $10, $15 million in the future. But what it's saying is you can raise $5 million from non-accredited investors, and you can advertise. Now, what that did was it allows you to now do a 506C simultaneously with your Reg CF, right? And if you do them together, now what you have is you have your Reg CF people, your non-accredited investors coming in. They fall into your Reg CF bucket up to $5 million. Your credit investors, they fall into your 5 or 6 C bucket. And together, you're basically now off, off, opening your offering to everybody and you can advertise, right? As long as it's done on a funding portal. That's the clear. It has to be done through a funding portal. With that funding portal, we facilitate that for real estate, right? So basically, um, you can raise an unlimited amount of money from the investing public. You can advertise. Anyone who shows up to your page can invest in it. And that's great, basically, for, and you're, you're, you know, there's certain disclosures and legal things you need to do. So we as a funding portal have obligations to make sure that, you know, we're, we're looking at your deal. We're looking at who you are. We're looking, doing some background checks. We actually go through the numbers to make sure it's all there. We're making sure you file your form C with the SEC, which is basically your PPM with the SEC. It becomes a public document. All of that needs to get, happen. You actually need also certified financials, depending on how much you're raising, you might need actually um, to have um, audited financials. So all of that is very good for the investor, right? And it's also good for the sponsor because now the sponsor is not wasting their marketing dollars, right? Because they're marketing out there and anyone who sees it can invest within you know the limits in which a non-accredited investor can invest based on their net worth and income. But um, you're basically not leaving any money on the table in your advertising and you, you've got net new capital coming in. So this should replace the five or six Bs, in my in my opinion. Like p- real estate investors should not be doing five or six Bs, right? Where yeah, you know, very often between you and me, we know people doing five or six Bs. You know that the way they're doing it might not fall, hold up to scrutiny the way they're finding their investors if someone really looked carefully. So this really allows you also to get on the regulatory perspective, your legal perspective, all your ducks in a row as well. Right. No, I like that. And that's, you're right. There's, I don't hear a lot of talk about this. One of the, you know, it's the, one of the platforms I did happen to look at last year. Uh, and then maybe even come on the show if I'm not mistaken, but it was it, the, the hoops that the sponsor, especially a lot of smaller sponsors, right? Like, let's say you're raising, well, let me ask that question. Like, is there a, is there a, a minimum dollar amount raise wise that you would say that the, that the juice becomes worth the squeeze on something like this? Well, I think it. So, so there is a fee associated with it, sure. right? Um, you mean you don't work for free? <laughs> no, the technology costs a lot of money to be able to for go sure. and operate, right? Yeah. So we don't work for free, but you know we're not looking to gouge people either. Sure. So you know I think our fees are very very fair and in line with industry standards, maybe a little bit lower, but. Um, uh, you know, if you're raising only a small, then you know, if you're only raising a couple hundred thousand dollars, you could still do it that way, wow. right? But you know, we we so yeah, I mean, you could. We don't have a minimum it, because part of it is we don't do the advertising for you. That's another key difference, right? Mm-hmm. We're not bringing you the investors. You might have crossover because we do have a lot of organic signups on our platform. We we market it our platform and we do a lot of SEO, and um, so we do have organic people showing up and they might invest, but. And we don't guarantee that, you know, investors who show up in the platform are going to invest in your deal. It's a bit like having a Facebook page up. Facebook doesn't guarantee you're going to have friends sure. on Facebook. But, you know, you need to kind of do some of that on your own. Sure. Sure. No, I, li- I like that answer, you know, because one of the things that, um, gosh, I saw on some of these other platforms was like, hey, 
you know, if you're not raising five or $10 million, then it just becomes, it just, it just didn't make sense. I looked at some of the, the numbers on it and especially for yeah. us, you know, we by and large, the assets we're buying, I mean, they're five to $10 million all in. So yeah. at that point, it's like, I mean, our equity raise might be 2 million bucks or 3 million bucks on a deal because this just doesn't, this doesn't pencil out. Um, yeah. And I'll charge you 70 grand before you even say boo, right? right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then, and then there's, then there's splits on the back end that they take and things like that. So it becomes a pretty that. cumbersome process. You talked, uh, you said here that they have to go through a funding portal. I mean, yeah. that's uh, so, so you're saying combine, you said do it as a 506 C if I hear your action steps, yeah. so right? Do a 506 C, but combine it with a regulation CF. Yep. And you just do it all through the portal. Uh, yeah. You mentioned a few things, audited financial. Invone is a platform, right? Invone right. is, we're registered, at, registered with the SEC and a member of FINRA to allow for those types of offerings. Right, right. Yes, thank you. Invone is the platform we're talking about here today. What's the timeline on something like this? Say a sponsor was thinking about this and they go, okay, I think that's the route yeah. I want to go. How far in advance should they be? I would say give yourself at least a month till you go live. Okay. Right, because... Because you know, it, it, in the end of the day, it is a securities offering, right? Now, we could we could do it faster, but typically, you know, it, there's going to be quite a bit of paperwork which needs to be kind of done, and you're going to need to strategize about how you do it. And it's not typically the way you, people are used to doing it, so therefore, you know, there'll be conversations and backwards and forwards and that, etc. We, you know, I think as we do more and more of them, we'll get quicker. But still, there's certain things which just take time. You have to have an Edgar account with the SEC. Right. You have to go through background checks. Right. You, you have to get certified financials. These are things which just, you know, you're going to have to have you can you're going you're gonna to have to have you know, your proper LLC documents. You know, all these things, they're just going to take some time, you know, and, and I'm not saying that they take months and months, but typically um, I haven't seen it done less than a month. Still. Right. Right. No. And that and in and, and, and just, you know, thinking ahead on that, maybe it's even 60 days because. Assuming you've, you know, you got the deal under contract, you're working through all the legal docs, or is it something where you guys help create those legal docs? Yeah, we help you with the legal docs, all of that. But, you know, we're talking about to going live where you can actually take investments in, but you can get reservations. You can put up a page tomorrow and get reservations. You just can't take any money through that. So you're getting a deal up where you're actually getting the reservations in, easy peasy, right? That's all you you can do that take you, you know, as long as it takes you to kind of basically put the information into the forms that we have with the dark pictures and everything to get your nice page looking nice. Um, but then to actually from there to go to where you're actually getting money in from investors into an escrow account, that's going to take, I say, at least 30 days. Right, right. No, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. Now, do you have a background in technology? I mean, I know you're talking yeah. about the, the, uh, you know, residential real estate combined with investors on the other side of things. So your background is tech. Well, I, I also own real estate. I've owned real estate for a while and I've, I, I've understood and I've learned the power of real estate as it relates to cash flowing assets and as it relates to kind of, uh, you know, tax benefits. I, you know, it's just like, as soon as you know that you can't unknow it <laughs> and they just kind of in some way you need to act upon it. And one of the things I'm excited about is that basically as an LP in a deal, you get all those benefits more or less. You get the benefit of the leverage in the deal, right? You get the benefits of the of the tax benefits, which kind of accrue to the LP. And you can do it at smaller uh, amounts on a company, on a, on a, on a deal like Inbound. And there are deals which we have out there, which used to only be available to accredited investors at $2,500, $250,000 a pop each as a minimum. So, you know, I'm excited to be able to offer you know, the kind of benefits that, you know, people like me who, who bought actual assets get and but have to have the headache of managing them, right, to people who just to be LPs and for small dollar amounts. So um, I so I, I owned real estate. I was fortunate to be able to buy real estate in my 20s and then, mm -hmm. you know, et cetera. I'm now in my 40s. Um, and then, you know, have that grow in value and cash flow, et cetera. But um, and now uh, that's, but I'm also a tech guy, right? So I work for tech companies, some pretty large tech companies and an oil gas company as well. I worked for, for BP for a short period of time. So uh, in their, in their data and, and technology space. So they have pretty big technology footprint. So it was all in technology, even though oil and gas was in technology, but yeah. Tell me about, tell me about what uh, would disqualify a sponsor from maybe being able to, to 
put something on your platform and or maybe the other way to ask that question is like what qualifications must a sponsor have is there a certain track record where they say hey i've been doing this yeah. for 10 years is there i mean what's the what's the kind of quality track record is good um but what would, wouldn't if they with no track record it wouldn't disqualify them it would it's their deal right uh, and the idea of of uh, crowdfunding is to allow people to get into it and raise money from the public right so they should be able to do that we would but if you've got a criminal record right or if you've got a dubious financial background or you've been dis disqualified from but by the sec from doing anything with the securities you would not be able to raise on our platform so um all those things we would do a full background check even if they're things that show up at your background check which make me which make us think that maybe you don't take um paying your debts back properly so if you end up you know uh, then you know we might say you know very nicely and politely maybe you should find another platform to work with um, so, you know, we, we're looking for people who have, you know, really good backgrounds, clear backgrounds. It's really important, right? You need a clear background uh, and we don't find stuff in your background, so which makes us think that maybe you might be ripping off investors. Well, right. And thank you. That's uh, that's really important, you know, I, that, uh, that we're not trying to rip off investors. That's uh, that's probably the golden rule in um, in everything we do here uh, when raising capital. So, that's, yeah, you uh, have to. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. What are some questions maybe I haven't asked you that are things that you'd say, hey, these are really important kind of high level things that uh, we should make sure we cover here? Yeah. You know, I, I want to focus on that just for one second, because, you know, someone said I, I talk a lot about, you know, that money isn't the most important thing in the world. Right. right. There are things like passion and purpose and fulfillment. And and what I do with Invo, at Invo, right. I've got my PhD in psychology. I studied about how to help people kind of figure out their purpose in life. So purpose is like this huge thing, which, um, which people need in their life. Why are you getting up in the morning? Why are you doing what you're doing? And my purpose at the moment with Invo is to help people kind of buy back their time mm. and even, so, and you have to start somewhere. So, you know, if we can open up I, the story of my dad, right? My dad was, was a guy in PhD in chemistry, really smart guy but he never really had much money, but he never had opportunities to invest. They just weren't available to him when they did show up. He did do it, but they just weren't many today. We have with the jobs act, we have the ability for people to invest uh, in all kinds of things. I wish they didn't have before. And it's kind of incumbent upon somebody to say, Hey, let's help people do that. Um, and so I telling sponsors that they can allow regular retail investors to get involved. That's part of my purpose. And then helping them, um, helping uh, uh you know helping retail investors get involved however that said like when you are managing other people's money whether it's investors money and i have managed because people invest in invo as a company sure i really deeply care about that money right so i would don't care like i have a purpose but you know it's really really important that it's anyone who's taking invest the money to realize that this is like it's a someone's giving you the privilege of helping them and just that's a that's a sacred privilege and it's just really important to, to focus on that and we care about that a lot and in invone to make sure that the people we put up on the platform are people who are gonna you know take that sacred privilege really carefully yeah that's really cool you know and like you said it, it kind of it goes both ways there uh i just had somebody else on the show that was kind of talking about this as well that the opportunities for say a middle income earning family to invest in the average syndication. Like if they came to me, they'd have to have at least 50 grand to get in one of our deals. And that's hard. That's hard for a middle income earning family. I mean, 50 grand can yeah. be a lot of money. It uh, is a lot. Of money. And, and it is a lot of money. It's a lot of money to me. It's like, okay, this is, you know, it's, it's still a lot of money. And having that opportunity for them to be able to get involved is, is just huge. Uh, and kind of breaking down some of those barriers to invest because those are the people that really, you know, good on you if you're a DECA millionaire and, you know, you make a huge return on your money. That's great. But, um, you know, watching the average everyday investor actually get respectable returns, I think is a really powerful, uh, powerful thing. So that's cool that your platform allows for that. Are there things that that regular everyday retail investor has to do in order to be able to invest through the platform? Yeah. Yeah. So they, they have to have this just, based on the rules from the SEC, um, they can't invest more than 10% of either their net worth or of their um, of their income, depending whichever is higher, in any given 12-month period. Mm. So there are limits to how much they can invest, right? So, you know... Um, 
Is that a self-certified 10%? Yeah, it's self-certified. So they would come onto the platform and they would, and 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 whether they're accredited or not is self-certified as well. So if they say they're accredited, they can still invest through RecCF if they don't want to go through. So for example, if you put up one of your five deals up and you said, I'm going to make this a five or six C in a RecCF, mm -hmm. the investor would come to the platform and they would say, I want to invest in this. A question would pop up and say, are you accredited? If they say that they're accredited, Right, then the question would be, do you want to prove that you're accredited by showing your, you know, your your documentation to show that you're accredited to go through a verification check? If they say no, they would go into the 506, the Reg CF, sorry, offering. Right? right. They would go through the Reg CF door into the offering, and then they could invest unlimited amount of money in that Reg CF offering because they're accredited. If they decide that they go that they're not accredited, then they're going to be asking another question is how much do you earn? Right. And how much your net worth? And then depending on that. If they've tried to invest more than they are allowed to, based on the SEC rules, it would uh, uh, an error would come up and say, "Sorry, you're trying to invest too much money. Go back and you know invest less or whatever." Right. So, but to the, to the point is that to the investor, you don't feel necessarily the difference if you're going to five or six C or X C F. It's just the questions are going to be different. That makes a lot of sense. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I was wondering. I was curious about that, and that that answers the question. You know, on a, on a from a compliance standpoint. Um, yeah, you know how that affects the end the end user there. Very cool, Levy. Thank you for coming on the show today. This was a lot of fun. I love the product thank you, thank you, you. Put, you put together here. Uh, I haven't heard of anything like this up to this point, so I'll be excited to jump actually there on your website and uh, take it for a drive and learn certainly more about it. If our listeners do want to get in touch with you, learn more about you and your platform, what is the best way to do that? So it's um, jump. Just send me a drop me a calendar invite. Right, it's. Uh, calendar.com forward slash invon i n v o w n stands for invest and own because it's a two-sided platform investors and owners so i n v o w n um so calendar.com forward slash invon go to invon.com um and you know send me an email levy which is l e v i it's actually pronounced levy but it's spelled levi levi invon.com send me an email and either or uh, talk to me i'd love to help you if you're looking to kind of grow your investor base and to kind of not do five or six Bs anymore, just unshackle yourself from the knee and and, and advertise to everybody. Uh, let's talk and we'll you know help you get reach net new investors. Sounds great. Levy, thank you again for the time today. I certainly appreciate it. A pleasure. Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big. 